Welcome to a guide to Leeds United with me, GWFM, and my teeny got game. What's up, guys? We're both avid Leeds fans, so we thought it would be a good idea to give our thoughts on the Leeds team based on Football Manager 2018. Along with giving you a few tips and hints with regards to possible transfers and tactics and so on, so we're going to take a look and uh, see what's what. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the first team squad, and you can see like the star ratings at the side. But all we're going to do for now is we're just going to look at the top three players based on like the first team, the under 23s, and the under 18s. So between us, we thought that the best three players to show would be Pontus Janssen, obviously is a tank, an animal. Um, yeah. As you can see, looking at all his attributes, he's just he's just ridiculously good for this level, in my opinion. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, there's, you can't. Really, I don't think you can really not be on him in terms of championship centre offs. So there's not really many that you can think of because he's got it in. Some are really good in terms of the uh, the main technical attributes. Yeah. Uh, but they don't really have it in the physicals. But he's got he's got a fair amount of pace for him for a big lad, and he's yeah. got you know he's got it he's got it in all the right areas basically. My feeling is that his one weakness is his agility. It's only nine. I'd rather agility be lower than the say like pace. You know? Yeah. So that's what I think. Next, we'll look at uh, everyone's favourite player at the moment, Samu Saiz. He's actually class in real life. Um, for me, a little bit underpowered. He's, he's good, obviously, in, in key stats, but there's certain areas I think he's actually better. Like, for instance, work rate, I think, should be a little bit higher. He's got the same strength as uh, Pablo Hernandez, and I think he's a little bit stronger than him. Uh, and probably a little bit better in the air as well, and I think he's a lot braver as well. But... It's probably a bit of bias because he has been he has had such a great start. Uh, a couple other things about him is that um, a couple on this game, the other p positions he can play, they're not really like glowing in terms of like they've only shown like half a semi half a circle or semicircle if you want to call it that because you can see it looks like a semicircle. Uh, but obviously, if you're going to play with a, an attacking midfielder centre, then he's going to be one of the most ideal players for you. Also, I think. He he seems quicker than he is in, yeah. in real life. Seems quicker than he is here. So, otherwise, yeah, he's very strong, as you can see. A lot of fourteens, fifteens, which for the championship is is unreal. Basically, you, you know, you, you're happy usually like thirteens, fourteens, but he's one a little bit better than that. But like you say, I agree. He's not as he's, he's quicker. He, he seems quicker in real life than what he is on here. But anyway, we'll have a look now at Alioski, the other. Like golden boy at the start of the season seems to have faded away in real life a little bit recently. But looking at him on this game, arguably the best player in the squad, uh, next to Pontus Janssen. Uh, I don't know what you think about that, Matt. Yeah, he's he's really good all round because we got. Mm. Um, I mean, I don't know about what, what I'm saying on your game, but you know, crossing and dribblings, fourteen, yeah, finishing same. fourteen as well. Yeah, um, it's got a lot of fourteens to be fair. A couple of sixteen, seven, well, sixteen, seventeen, and fifteen thrown in there as well. But again, he's, he's, he's a very good player, isn't he? I mean, strength's only nine. I think that's probably overpowered, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, tackling, he, get, he gets stuck in, but he's, he's a bit wild with his tackles, I would say. Uh, so seven's probably about right, I think. But otherwise, like I say, yeah, flair 17, determination 16, and like it's a 14s in all like the, the key areas for like an inside forward. Which is fantastic. He's actually valued at 12.75 million, which I believe is the highest valued. So, yeah, it's uh, a sign of like what kind of player he is on this game. It's saying he's more of a winger uh, on yeah. the left hand side as opposed to like the inside forward as we've been accustomed to. I am quite particular sometimes when it comes to wingers. I don't normally like to play a left footed winger on the right. I don't know, it just kind of yeah. annoys me. So, if you're kind of like that, then you can play him on, on the wing. But I'm a little bit surprised he's not. I don't know his his role and duty isn't better as an inside forward because that's that's kind of where he made his name. He started yeah. as a left back, didn't he? Yeah. When he was um, and he's played there for his country as well. But yeah, it's like now he's very much a case of being um, and he, he could play on the right as an inside yeah. forward. Also, I mean, he got about seventeen goals, didn't he? Like last yeah. season, which is why he got his move. But sorry, I'll cut you off there. Sorry, mate. Yeah, but yeah, like you said, he got seventeen goals and. And it was kind of primarily from the right as an inside forward, but he mm. operated all the way across. And also, kind of disappointed he's not maybe a little bit better as a forward because he played there as well. And that's yeah. Like I said, he was just he was all over the place. But yeah, a little bit, um, a little bit yeah. amused as to why his inside forward rating isn't a bit better. Yeah, I mean it's very good anyway. It's like probably like eight out of ten, but it's not ten out of ten, which is what it, for me it should be. 
So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the under 23s. And if we look, I've actually set it, I don't know if Martina's done the same, but I've set it so you've got all the under 23s and the under 18s on the same screen. I'm going to highlight all the potential. And we've listed again three players from each like, sort of group of players. Um, one of them is a bit debatable because he's in the under 23s, but he's actually under 18 years of, of age. So we'll start off with under 23s, and this is another one that's a bit dubious because he's actually in the first team squad, so I'm going to have to actually go back into the first team squad. And that's good old Ronnie Vieira. Uh, what are your thoughts on him, Matt? Uh, a little bit disappointed, <coughs> actually. Yeah. Um, considering how good a season he had last term, um, mm. I was expecting a lot more, like... We said we're a little bit disappointed with size, but I'm very, very disappointed with Ronnie Vieira's stats. Yeah. Like you've mentioned it, his strength isn't very good, and the guy's, you know, he's built like a brick outhouse, basically. Yeah, basically, yeah. Um, to put it politely. I mean, but <clears throat> at the same time, he's got cracking potential, and he is young. Yeah. Um, and I think determination maybe should have been a bit better as well. Yeah, I think so as well. Honest, but... he'll just he'll he'll go all day, he'll run all day, and he's just he, he never stops really. Yeah, and this passing should be 20 because as the song goes, he never gives the ball away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one other oh. thing I would say, oh, unless you're going to say I'll let you say I it. I was going to say, yeah, it. considering the goal he scored against Norwich last season, I think his long shot should be better as well. Yeah, but they'd, the they'd argue, I think they'd argue maybe it's based on one goal. So, I don't know. It's not exactly like uh, Alex Mowat or something where he's scoring goals all the time. Yeah, um, cracking goal, though. The one thing that does annoy <laughs> me, and I'm pretty sure you've mentioned this to me in the past, is... He is kind of he is Portuguese, but he's been over here like all his life, and he's got under under nineteen caps, is it, or under twenties caps for England? And he's did he win the Euros with him? It was the it was the under twenty. He's got six under uh, under twenty caps, and he won the two long tournament. He scored the winning penalty. In yeah, the final, I remember actually. that. Yeah, um, I I have been on the forums and I have mentioned it, and they've sort of said, yeah, we we can't we you know we're taking that on board. Yeah, so moving on to the next player, and we're going to have a look at Conor Shaughnessy. Featured quite a little bit more than probably what anyone would have thought at the beginning of the season. The thing that annoys me more than anything is the fact that he's played all his games for us at centre-back, and he's down as an accomplished centre-back with like half ratings for all the centre-back like roles. Uh, yeah, like I said, he's, we weren't really expecting to see him, but it's just circumstances dictated that we had to kind of play him, because... Yeah. Yeah, like I said, Pennington went down injured in the first game against uh, Bolton. Um, yeah. Janssen was injured because, you know, he likes to stick the boot in a bit <laughs> from last season. It was a red card last season, wasn't it? A red it? card, against, yeah. Uh, yeah, it wasn't someone we were expecting to see. And I don't know, in terms of any, whoever's watching particular save, we'll, we'll go into it a little bit more on the second part. But if you were to buy, say, a centre half, um, yeah. then you probably you won't really need him. Um, probably see him going out alone, maybe. Yeah, I'd hold on to him until Jans until the very least Jansen's back, because you're going to be if you're waiting for Pennington, then it's going to be beyond September, so you're not going to be able to get a shot of him. Um, but I would send him out on loan. But again, that's only if you do manage to get another centre half in. Cause... Yeah, I think there's a chance that if you did get a centre half in um, after the first cup game, Pat Jansen is back, but you definitely need a third centre back because Pennington's injured for quite some time. Before we started recording the video, we were talking about um, the centre midfield. I mean, you could, you realistically could play him there, but yeah. again, he doesn't really offer, he doesn't really offer anything different to say, you know, um, the other ones. He's not got yeah. something that sets him apart from the rest of them, if that yeah. makes sense. Phillips, so, Phillips and Vieira and, and Sean is looking at his attributes. They're very similar, but he's probably a little bit behind them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and he's on you a know. long contract as well. He got a four-year yeah. deal out of it, so it's more. I think it's worth keeping him for that reason alone because I think you, you know, especially first season, even if you send him out on loan, he does all right. You might be able to maybe make a bit of a profit on him as well in, in terms of selling. But I would try and keep him because I think he's got definitely got some ability. But anyway, I think we best move on to the next one, uh, which I think is going to have to be Louis Coyle. Uh, it was actually out on loan for the first season at Fleetwood uh, with our former manager, Yui Rosler. I'm not, honestly, I haven't seen much of him. I haven't really been looking at uh, Fleetwood being a lead fan, of course. But mm. um, yeah, he's he's got potential. It's just, it depends where you end up next season. If you, because he's going to be out on loan for the season, you can't yeah. cancel the loan. So if you get to the Premier League in your first season, it, can he do a job there? If you don't get promoted, he'll, you know, definitely, I'll definitely keep hold of him. But yeah, 
if you do get promoted, then it may still be worth just keep on him for a season, but as like, you know, the, the last resort, really, if everything else goes to tits, then you'll need a right back. And he can do a job at right back, obviously, but yeah. probably not a long term option. Did you play him during? Because I remember last uh, in FM 17 when you didn't get promoted mm. um, <laughs> in your first Thanks. season. I can't, yeah. I can't Cheers, recall pal. if you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome, Play a final. I got FM'd well and truly. But anyway, go on. Yeah, it's quality. <laughs> quality. Uh, but I don't know. Did you play him in your second season in the championship? Was he someone you used? Because I don't stats think don't I did in the end. I don't yeah. think so, no, because I had uh, David Ferrauni and I had him in um, oh, yeah, and I Ailing. Him. I ended up selling Berardi, which I don't know why I think I needed the money. And they were only, he was the only player that anyone were offering any money for, so I ended up selling him. But with that money, I got Ferrauni for like about a third of the price of what I got for Berardi. Um, and then, it, as a result, I ended up sending him out alone again. I think I ended up, I ended up selling him, I believe it or not, to, to Millwall uh, for about 650k, which ironically is what is valued on here. Yeah. Ooh, Millwall. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> yeah. But yeah about no, so we'll but, move on to now. Unless you've got anything else to say about Kyle. Um, not a big fan of his haircut, but at the end, that's just subjective, <laughs> really. <laughs> Looks a bit angry, doesn't he, in his picture? He does. Um, he does. Yeah. Probably because he's been sent out alone. You're not playing for these, but we're off to Fleetwood. Yeah. Uh, next is we're going to look at the under 18s guys and we'll start off with I'll let you pronounce his name <laughs> I mean he's not in the under 18s he's under 23s but I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about uh, Temenuskov yeah Temenuskov yeah. Temenuskov or whatever it is 10 yeah, men uh, fuck off is what I called him but anyway yeah that's what he's been calling him all yeah. night <laughs> and um, 17 years old which is why he falls under this bracket and you can kind of see that he's got something about him uh, I don't know what it looks like on yours but like he's got off the ball 14 finishing 13 pace 13 acceleration 13 all good base stats technique 13 um, and yeah we're a little bit like uh, tutorage um, maybe trying to get up his work rate early on with the, apparently you, if you use um your fitness training that does affect your work rate so that's one thing especially when they're younger get the fitness like going for about a good three months this is based on fm17 by the way so it might be different now uh but yeah i think if you can get his work rate up and get his determination up i think there's no reason why this guy can't go far yeah i mean he was he was really highly rated uh, apparently at barcelona when he was coming through their famed um academy he looks like he could be he could be it, you know. Yeah. Like give it, give it two, three years maybe, and he could be first team regular week in week out, banging goals in. And you, did you say you played him in your? Um... I played him in the friendlies, and I, I would mm. think one thing I would say is he would be an absolute nightmare for commentators. But he's, uh, yeah, he did really well in the in the, in the friendlies. He got a couple of goals, albeit where I get to uh, like uh, teams in like divisions below. But I think he's got to get someone in League One, which I didn't think were bad. Um, not that it's a massive challenge, like, but I can't remember <laughs> off the top of my head. But, yeah, I just think he's got a lot of potential. I just think, he, you know, all, all his other stats are around 7, 8, 9, and 10 sort of mark. Whereas, normally, you see some players, like I'll give you an example. I'll just have a look at, uh, where's, he, where's he gone now? That guy I were about earlier that was terrible. Matthew Kyo. Right, got some good base stats for like his, you know, marking 12, decision 12, position 13. But look at all the ones that he's got everywhere. 10 men, I'll call him that, 10 men, um, he's, like I said, the only only one that he lacks is the jumping reach, which is not a really a lot you can do about it with him being 5 foot 5, so I think he, he could really develop if you put the work in into a top, top player. Right, so next we're going to move on to Matty Downing, who is the left back, I did use him a lot on FM17 if anyone did watch. And, and he, he did a job for us all the way up to the well, up to I think the third season, which was the second season in the Premier League. And he did do a job, but he just eventually just got he, he just basically got outshone by it, like the likes of Angelino in my city. But uh, yeah, basically a lot of potential. Um, he has got a couple of areas that you know that need a bit of improvement, like technique. Um, you know, but it's not really needed for a left back that much. But I think it helps. Because uh, it gets forward and crossing and whatever. But other than that, he's got some really good base stats again. I don't know what you think, uh, Matt. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, I don't know. I think I recall him being rated a little bit, a little bit better last season. But right. Again, I think he was as well. I think he was five star. Yeah. Well, four to maybe five. Yeah, but uh, I, I mean that could just be the case because 
outside of Football Manager, if you, I mean, if you've been watching, like, you're watching G Save or you ever watch My Save, I didn't really use him, but um, I don't really hear of much of him. No, like true. you would say, some of the, you know, some of the other players in the youth teams that we've got, the scope's there. It's just it's w the willingness to use him. I mean, we are kind of short left backs uh, this season. We've got Cameron Bothwick Jackson, and then we've got Brady who's injured like all the time. So um, <laughs> usually with shoulder injuries or nose injuries or something. But, um, yeah, the one thing I will say is he's only got one year left in his contract, which kind of gives you an indication of how highly he's rated at Leeds at the minute. Again, that gives you kind of an indication of how he's thought of. Mm. If he was really highly rated and, you know, people were starting to, you know, say, oh, OK, he's going to be knocking on the door the first, he probably would have a new contract. I'd say it probably is worth giving him a contract just to see where it goes because it's not really going to cost you much money. I'd but... give him three years, me, to 20-year-old, yeah. see where he's at 20 years old. Worth keeping hold of just to see where it goes, really. Yeah, and then finally for the players, uh, we'll look at Romario Vieira. That's it's Ronnie Vieira's uh, twin brother, but what a name! Eh? We've got Ronaldo Vieira and then Romario Vieira, like two of the best Brazilians to ever play football, and then like Patrick Vieira for some reason. But anyway, <laughs> I don't think they chose that last name, though, did they? Like, which no, was no. <laughs> uh, Vieira. <laughs> Look, he's got some good stats, so, you know, for me, he's got passing 14 and vision 15, which isn't bad, decision 15 as well, as well as acceleration being 15 in pace, but then he's got the downsides of determination 4 and, like, you know, general first touch 7 and, you know, a lot of room for improvement, but given some work, he's got three and a half, sorry, three star to four star potential, which I think, again, it's the same sort of, like, theme as with Downing, if, you know, you're able to give him some game time in like cup games or whatever or even send him out on loan maybe he might be able to come close to like the standard of his brother yeah possibly also like um just like downing as well he's only got like a year left on his contract so, yeah you know worth possibly giving him one till he's like 20 21 again he's not going to cost you the earth i mean he's on 800 quid which is quite a lot actually for a hot prospect yeah try and um, um, envisage is that even the right word I think it is having like a, a bit like a De Boer sort of situation where you're having the two bro twin brothers in the same team that's one thing that you could try and, and, and do but it's going to be hard work with Romario I, I, st I think it has to be said just a quick point we've also got another pair of twins as well uh, in Paul McKay and Jack McKay um, but not to highlight them too off too much but yeah they we've got two lots of twins at the team which that would be absolutely awesome if we could get all four of them playing at the same time that would be awesome wouldn't it but it's probably yeah, unlikely. Honestly, honestly, when you said we, when we, when you said that uh, we've got another pair of twins, I thought you were going to say something else then, and pair I don't know if I want to say it. Pair, pair of tits. I don't mind saying it. <laughs> no, no, no. A specific oh, right. pair. A specific, a specific pair of boobs. Um, if you're a Leeds fan, you've been watching Leeds TV. I think you know who I'm. Oh about. yes. 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 Oh yeah. Benaz. Yes. Yeah. How much? <laughs> And then finally, uh, we've got um, Rocky Balboa's like missus just languishing in the under 18s as well. Um, Adrian, Adrian, Rocky Balboa, you know, is not that good, but it's just the fact that he's got a funny name, and that's all yeah, there is that, to it. That's pretty much all. <laughs> he just wants a name for that. He, he discussed it. I wasn't even looking at him when he said we got yeah. a name. We got to mention him because he's you know Adrian Balboa, married to Rocky, uh, but that's G for you, I suppose. Right, so now we're going to have a look at the staff and all like the different aspects of it. And to be honest with you, it's a mixture of really good and really bad. Yeah, agree? yeah. There's there's a lot of room for. There are some really good standout staff members, like um, firstly Ma Ma Marcus know, Abad, aren't we? Yeah, and also Neil Sullivan. So a couple of, we've got a couple of really good goalkeeping coaches, but then you'll have uh, you know. Our senior coach is like Paul Butler. Not the same Paul Butler he used to play for us, of course. But, not the one um, that's on this picture here. Where's he gone? Not him. I haven't got him. I haven't got the face back. So yeah, you it's, guys it's an old face back. <laughs> yeah, it's an old face back here. Uh, Paul Butler. And it's like the one who used to play for us. He must be about 41 or something now, not 31. But yeah, as you can see, he's, he's just dreadful for this level. The assistant manager who was brought in by Christiansen. He's, again, he's just dreadful. Nines and tens across the board, basically, apart from working with youngsters. Uh, it's a bit disappointing, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was a big fan of Pep. And I was hoping yeah. he would stay on as possibly manager. Have you, <laughs> have, you, big... have you done a little look at money here? He's shit hot still. Is he? Yeah, he's like, in, in League One, he's got like uh, tactical knowledge or something like 15. In fact, I'm going to search him now. 
Pep yeah, Quartet. Because so I. I know you were you were a big um, you had a lot of belief in him and you thought he'd be be taken over from Gary Monk. Fourteen tactical knowledge, but look at all his other attributes. It's, it's unreal for that level anyway for League One. It's just disgusting. But otherwise, we've got Ivan Torres, who we'll have a look at him. The fitness coach, fourteen fitness, but everything else is a bit left to be desired. Um, so it's average at best for me. Uh, and then Adam Underwood. I think it varies. Uh, like certain attributes we found that didn't match. Like for instance, I've got like here as a head of youth development in terms of finding players, is she taught really? Seventeen working with youngsters, judging player potential sixteen, ability thirteen. Determination 18 and motivation 14. But if you look at his coaching uh, attributes, which he, he actually helps with the mani uh, the coaching of the under 18s, like seven eights, seven eights and nines, that's that's what you get. He's not the best in that that side of it. So he's good for recruitment, not so good for development, if you like. Yeah, that's kind of the overall theme of the staff. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a it's a mixed bag in terms of what you have, but also what stats you actually get. Because sometimes you can get someone who First time you do it, not very good. Second time you do it, really good. And you can have a look as well at the like underneath the coaching team comparison. You can see as defensive coaching is shocking, attacking coach is not be much better. Technical is crap as well. And you've got tacti tactical and mentals, it's not great like in terms of the average. So you definitely need to get some improvement there. Um, so you might have to let some of them go um, and cost some of you. Well, it costs you money doing it to let them go, but. It is what it is. If you want to know like a long-term save, then you're going to have to do something like that. But moving on to the scouts, and again, it's the same sort of story. Shit hot and shit, basically. Um, we've got Victor Arto, who's probably the best scout, probably, I'd argue, on the game. Uh, judgeability, 18 and 20 on mats. Mm -hmm. I believe it's 19, isn't it? I've got 18 and 20. 18 and 20. Mine. Oh, yeah. Sorry, on my, on my current beta save, it's 19 and 19. But, yeah, very, very good. And then you've got... Uh, Terry Potter, this is where it is, 10 and 12. And he's not the worst one, because then you've got Danny Salas. Go on, lad. Stuart, <laughs> Stuart, Stuart Dallas's Spanish cousin. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Salas, Stuart Dallas, it's like a combination of both. But anyway, 8 and 9, that's dreadful. We've got our data analyst, which for some reason we've got one mixed in with all the scouts, because uh, he does both. So it, it must be a scout, but he does both. I don't know, must do two jobs. Probably and, links the two departments, yeah. I suppose. But as you can see, not very good, is it? Sixes and, and eleven for judging player data and scouting itself, twelve and ten. Turd. So other than that, you've got Alex Davis, who eleven, eleven and six for the data analysis and look at these mentals. Shit hot. And then you look at his coaching and it's not that bad. So that's an option. You could maybe promote him well, if you want to call it promoting. Uh, promote him into the into the coaching side of things because I think he can do a job as a tactical or a te technical manager, especially with these attributes over here. Shit up. Yeah. But um, yeah, next you've got Chris Meek, who yeah, turd, and then <laughs> and even worse, the worst yet is Benat Labayan, who yeah, eight, six, and five, and scouting ten and eight. It's just it's not good, is it? Not really, considering how much he's on as well. One point thousand. That's a lot of money you could save. So moving on, because we've already covered the data analysts, we're going to move on to the medical team now. And it's again, it, it's not bad. There's some, that, you know, we've got Steve Megson who's very good in terms of physiotherapy, uh, sixteen. So that's not bad at all. But then you've also got uh, Henry McStay. Um, Terrible joke inbound. It's a like a real shit burger from McDonald's, but anyway. Um, <laughs> and then physiotherapy, 14. It's not bad against. So Dan Birdsell, sport scientist, 14. Not bad. Decent scouting as well. Uh, looking at his coaching, he could potentially be a fitness coach as well if that was the way you want to go, but he's not that amazing. But yeah, scouting. He could be a decent scout with 15s across the board. And finally, we've got uh, Tom Robinson, who's got 12 sport scientists. And a little bit of determination. For those who aren't aware, they probably you probably are, to be fair. Uh, determination is the mental desire of the staff member to succeed. This isn't a coaching attribute in terms of coaching a player's mental approach, but rather the staff members, the staff members' own innate drive to better themselves. Now, under 23 is the only person to look at is Carlos Corbin, Jeremy Corbin's Spanish cousin. I don't know why I'm doing these shit jokes. 
<laughs> I really don't know. And yeah, as you can see, in terms of uh, training, you know, look at all that. Working with seven, working with youngsters seventeen, that's as good as it gets, really, because the actual coaching sevens across the board, fit, fitness is for. Um, yeah, it's shite in it, really. Let's be honest. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's even worse on my side because I've got um, seven, seven, five, seven, 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 and then eleven for working with youngsters. So I've even so, got, the, I've even got the grace of working with youngsters. But his mentals are pretty good on my end. Yeah, um, it seems to be like that with quite a few of them. To be fair, there's a few like uh, contrasting sort of attributes, but the main ones seem to be roughly the same. So moving on to the under 18s, and we've got the under 18s fitness coach Rob Etherington. Um, fitness is nine for a fitness coach. Could probably get better than that if I'm honest with you. Uh, and you know, he's he's on just shy of a grand a week, so I think you'd probably get better than that uh, for the money. But then you've got the other end of the scale. You've got good old Neil Sullivan, the guy who was lobbed from the halfway line by David Beckham all those years ago. Had Paolo Di Canio score that scissor kick past him all those years ago. All these memories flooding back. But yeah, working with youngsters 16 and all the goalkeeper like attributes 15 across the board very very good coach and then other than that you've got Andy Gray not the Andy Gray it's uh, Eddie Gray's nephew I believe uh, he started out at Leeds United so you might want to keep him just because of sentimentality reasons uh, but yes working with youngsters is 14 everything else is like 9 and that's about as good as it gets so you might want to look to replace him. And then you've got Mark Jackson, who I believe is even worse. Probably the worst member of staff that you have at the club. No disrespect, Mark, but the figures don't lie. Yeah, Mark, if you are better than this, if you think you are, then you should uh, go to the uh, the Bugs Forum or the Data yeah. Forum on uh, on side games and just complain and say, I'm better than this. Yeah. But uh, yeah, otherwise, you could probably find better. For a lot of these staff, it's a case of... Uh, some good ones, but you can definitely find better for probably less money. Uh, Daryl Carter, 15 physiotherapy for the under-18s team. I don't think he's bad, so I don't think you need to replace him. And I think that brings us on to the final part of this section, which is the positions you could fill. Let's go look at the board screen and just show you down here now. We've got, basically, you can... Uh, obviously, you can get rid of some of the, the staff and replace them with your own, but you can also get an extra under... Well, an under 23's assistant manager you can get another first team coach you can get a first team physio a first team head of sports science you can you've already got two sports scientists uh well one more than what you're allowed so you could keep hold of him or just release one of them anyway but then you've got the entire coaching staff like well three coaches for the under 23's a physio for the under 23's and the sports scientist for the under 23's on top of that you've got an under 18's coaching staff member I don't know why I did that so weird. But anyway, under 18s physio and under 18s sport scientist. And then you've also got one scout too many, which means that you've got a couple of turd ones. So before getting a debate one, you're probably going to have to lose two of them, um, which could be an issue maybe. You've also got two extra data analysts. So depending on how often you're going to be using data analysts, you might choose to release two of them just to save the wages alone. Uh, but you could also just transfer them into the under 23s and 18s data analysts because you've got... Um, room for one of each so you could just spread it across but yeah that's everyone that you could probably look at uh, well the staff positions you could probably look at to to get the best out of your players in terms of training and physical sensors and like medical sensors so anything to add at all Matinho? No just like I said there's a lot of wiggle room if you want to change things up you can do that and there's a lot of room for improvement on the coaching side definitely but, I don't know. It could possibly, I don't want to say function. Um, it would function, it will tick over, but if you want to improve the players you've got, of which there are quite a lot that do have some potential that we've mentioned, um, then you yeah. definitely need to upgrade the staff um, in the youth teams especially. Yeah, 100%. So that's going to bring this video to a close. Um, basically, this is part one of two. So part one is obviously on my channel, because you're here now, obviously. Uh, come on, G. But the second part is going to be on Martino's channel, so I'd like you to go ahead now and click on his channel, subscribe, and then you can see when this the part two of this like little mini section, if you like, want to call it that, uh, and find out like the following subjects. We're going to have potential tactics for this season, well, for for Leeds as like in the opening season, uh, the finances, what to start with, like transfer budgets, etc., etc., what the board expectations are. 
and also then potential transfers in and out. Anything to add there, Martino? No, like he said, you know, um, check out the channel. I would hope G does put the link to the video oh, well, in this one um, and also my channel. But yeah, if you've enjoyed this first part, make sure you check out the second part because, like I said, we've still got more to do. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, hopefully it hasn't been too long. Um, but yeah, That's what well, she said. Yeah, we, we, that doesn't really I was work, fighting. Does it? I was no, no. <laughs> Ho hope it's not too long. They want it to be too long. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you can join us for the next one. Ho obviously, don't forget to leave a like if you have enjoyed this more, a little bit more. I like to think a bit more in depth, um, like guide for Leeds United on FM18. And yeah, if I haven't said it already, don't forget to subscribe and hopefully join us on Martino's channel for the second part of a guide to Leeds United on FM18.